Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Visit Joan, and welcome to another house tour. This time around, I rebuilt 210 right way from the um, Sims 2. And I basically did this house off camera because it was a pretty big build, and that would require a lot of editing, and I didn't want to screw around with that. And I think I'm going to do that from now on. But anyway, you guys, I originally decided to, um, for one of the families from the family been from The Sims 2 that I recreated for fun because I was bored. But the more I made this house, the more I realized that it didn't really, like, fit that family. Especially because some of the Sims were just downright ugly. And so I came up with something else. So the backstory from this is kind of like the plot right out of a romance novel. And I mean, not the lame ones where nothing actually happens. I mean, the like interesting ones. And by interesting, I mean, there's a baby involved. So basically what we have is we have, you know, a young woman named Summer Marshall. She's a single mom. She's an artist. And, you know, painting wasn't really um, going for her. So she had to get a job as like a secretary to Grayson Marshall, a very young, but very rich, you know, head of the company. And I gave him the blue hair just to be unconventional and to just destroy that stereotype. But anyway, well, things escalated rather quickly and they found themselves in the middle of a very heated and very quick affair. And it really wasn't anything more than that. It was just a purely physical relationship, but um, it did have its consequences and, and Summer soon found herself pregnant. I know I've told this story kind of before, but really just pregnancies just make everything 10 times more interesting. But anyway, you know, this is not the first time this has happened to her. She actually had her first child when she was a teenager and the father, you know, kind of just strung her along. They were kind of prepared to get married, but he just kind of, you know, just kept stringing her along long enough to um, have two more children, the twins. And eventually he's like, no, you know what? I don't want to be with you. I'm done. And he just goes up and leaves. So, which leaves her with three children now and barely any income at all and so she tried trying to make it as an artist and that really didn't work but anyway once she found out she was pregnant she pretty much just quit her job and she's like you know i can't really tell him because you know i don't even know what the heck she was thinking but she didn't tell her children she didn't tell her family because their minds being like what what the heck are you doing getting involved with the wrong man again are, are you crazy you know but grayson was not happy about that at all because you know what he did love her, but he was just way too dense to even realize it. He just still thought it was just a purely physical thing. And so he's like, you know, I. but he just had a yearning to get her back. And so he found her after a while. And since, you know, this is her third pregnancy, the belly popped out pretty fast. And so he sees her and he's like, what the heck is this? What is going on? And so she admits, yes, I'm having your baby. That's why I quit. That's why, you know, everything is going on. And the first thing he does is saying, okay, why don't we get married? And she's like, no, I, I can't, you know, because she was in love with him and she knew she was in love with him, but she really just didn't want to get involved with another guy who was just going to leave her with his children. But she just, she's, she's like, I'm sorry, I already have like three children. I can't just randomly uproot them and bring them somewhere else. And he's like, well, th that's not a problem. I have a child too. The child was the product of a one night stand and Grayson never saw that woman again until she just came by and randomly dropped the baby on his doorstep. Like, here you go, you take her, I don't want her. And so he's been, you know, stuck with this toddler that he's trying to learn how to be a father to. So, you know, the idea of having more children in the house really just didn't, you know, phase him at all. But Summer was basically like, no, I, I can't marry you. And so throughout this whole time, you know, they still continued to be involved and you know, he just kept asking her, will you marry me? Will you marry me? And she kept saying no over and over again. And so he just got like so frustrated. He figured that if he did like a public proposal kind of thing, that she would be too ashamed to say no. And yes, that was a result. She was embarrassed, but she totally just shot him down and just was kind of really furious. So he went off and got some advice. And I'm not going to actually reveal that part of that just yet. But anyway... He got some advice and he said, you know what, okay, if you won't marry me, won't you at least move into this house I just bought? Well, he kind of had to buy a house anyway because the apartment he had wasn't really all that kid friendly and he needed a place to settle down with his daughter. And he knew that Summer was living in a really tiny house. All of her children shared one bedroom and he figured the, if he could buy a house in like the area where she lived, she wouldn't have to uproot her children 
and she, you know, each of their children could get their own bedroom. So he showed her the house and, you know, she, she kind of agreed because she wanted what was best for her children. And so she went up and she just told them that they were going to be moving into this new house, showed them the house, and, um, and her children were just pretty much really impressed. So they all moved in. She introduced Grayson as her friend that was helping her out. But, I mean, it was pretty obvious that she was pregnant at this point. I mean, at least the oldest kind of figured it out. But Grayson, you know, did eventually figure out that he did love Summer and he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. And, you know, he kind of had to make up for just totally blowing up the proposal and just, you know, but eventually he kind of did that with the house and with everything. And, you know, eventually he did, they started talking and he did propose to her and she did eventually say yes. So, you know, she was finally able to open up to her children, told them that, yes, she and Grayson were a couple and that they were going to get married. And then she told them about the baby that was coming. And then they, you know, planned a pretty quick wedding. It was still nice. It was, like, you know, really fancy. But with the money that Grayson has, you know, they were able to get everything at, like, the last minute. Well, it wasn't exactly the last minute, but it, it did take a while because, you know, you could see she's really pregnant during this wedding. But, you know, she was able to have a beautiful wedding and have her family and her friends to celebrate. So that is the story of this family. It is basically just a blended family just trying to figure out how to make uh, this house home. And we're going to start on the tour now. And as you can see, we are in the front yard. I did build this in Strangerville because other than the wedding vi venue, I haven't really built in Strangerville all that much. So here we are at the front of the house. We can see there's a driveway over there. There's, it's got like a little walkway up to the house. And um, you can see here, there's a little garden plots over on the side. And when we go up to the porch, there are some um, wind chimes up here and just some clutter that's just strewn around. You know, I just figured I don't want the deck to be like bare. you know, that just looks stupid. So I threw some, you know, sports under the little, um, what even is that? I, I don't want to call that a coffee table, even though that's technically what it is. But anyway, you've got um, a little plant over here that looks like a ladybug, and you have like a little fire pit. I don't know why that is so close to the house. That is really a fire hazard, but anyway. Um, we've got little benches here, so you can sit by the fire. But anyway, now we're going to um, go inside the front door, and I did have a, when I was building this, I couldn't figure out which side was the front and which side was the back, but this is the little entryway we have here. We have, you know, a little plant hanging down there. We have um, leashes for the dog. That's where all the dog leashes go. And we just have a bunch of storage stuff and tables and just, you know, just knickknacks and gardening supplies and shoes and all this other stuff in here. And toys for the dog. So we're going to go in this door right here. And this is going to be the living room. Now, the living room I kind of did in, like, um, I was trying to get away from doing teal, but... You know what? I did it anyway. I did like a light green and then, well, I love these couches. I don't think I've used them in a build on this computer anyway. But um, anyway, I didn't clutter up the coffee table like I usually do because I was running out of stuff to clutter it with. And, you know, I figured that Grayson would probably be just a neat guy. Well, not like neat, neat, like neat enough to have the trait. But he just like things, you know, um, like order and tidy and just, just likes everything organized. And he has a big screen TV because I figured, you know, rich business executive, that is what this guy would have. You got the stereo over here. We have a little wall that, like, separates the two parts of the living room. We have, you know, the family posters. And we're going to go into the kitchen right here. And I am really proud of how this kitchen turned out, guys. We've got um, some shelves over here. We've got herbs, I guess. I don't, I don't even know why you would have those in the kitchen. I I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But um, we have the Jungle Adventure. I hate it when people do that. Why am I doing that? We have like make little jar lights. Maybe maybe the kids made them. I don't know. But anyway, I decided, you know, I wanted to go with teal in this kitchen. And I have like, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to do the dark backsplash because I haven't done them like that. This is a bunch of just shelves and stuff in the kitchen there. And I love this. See, I saw this idea on Erica Builds. If you don't know her, check her out. But anyway, I thought it would be a really good idea to separate, like, the um, stove and the place where they eat. And here's, you know, the cabinets with all the little shelves and stuff. There's a little spice rack. You've got um, racks of pots and pans and utensils, whatever those are, right by the fridge. And you have the stove right here. It's 
teal, just like everything else in this house. And you've got a coffee maker. Okay, so now we have a back door and we're gonna go out this and you can see the backyard, it's got a pool. You have this little um, seating area with some flowers by it. And um, we're going to go, are we gonna go down? I don't know, I filmed this this morning and I can't remember, but here's a don't wait the llama table. We have little hanging plants. Over here, a little bird feeder. And you know, we got the fire sprinkler thingy and the jigger and little seating area. So now I think we're gonna go down and check out the pool area. This is a pretty cool pool. It's got a couple of floats. It's got a couple of floaties in there and it's got like, you know, a rock diving board thing with a couple of, um, what you call it, water bitters. And we got a kiddie pool for the toddler. And over here we have a little bar area just to be outside and chill and sit down and relax. And up here we have a little platform with the um, lounge chairs and a little plant. And then in here we have an in-ground hot tub. And I don't know if this is functional. I have not tested it yet, but hopefully it works. If not, it's just for show. But, you know, anyway, here's looking back on the entire pool. Oh, hi, Smokey. There's Smokey. We got water balloons back there and a perfect view of the yard. So now we are back in the kitchen and now we're going to head into the dining room. And this is a really cool dining room. It's I decided to do it in green. And, you know, we have a circular table in the middle of it because I haven't done a circular table in a dining room yet and I thought that would be really cool. And, you know, there, there are six people in this house, soon to be seven, but anyway, we got the green curtains over here. We have a bar, you know, that overlooks the pool. It's really, really nice. We got um, a wall of knickknacks over here, which I saw in, I think, another one of Erica Bill's house tours. So I kind of was taking some inspiration from her and I put like a little bit of like all these knickknacks together to make it look like some kind of wall decoration because I just don't like it when the walls are blank, guys. Like I've been looking at some of the builds I first did, like of the Sims 2 houses. I might actually revamp some of them. But anyway, we are now back in the living room. We're in like a side door. This also goes out to the backyard. We have a little table here for outdoor eating and there's a garage and the trash can that the dog likes kicking over. Really ought to teach him not to do that. But um, we have a grill, we have a cooler, we have more wind chimes. The wind chimes are great. We have, um, anyway, and now we're gonna go down here and you can see what else is in this yard. As you can see, there is Smokey the dog. Hi, Smokey. Um, you got a sandbox for the kids. You got swings, because it's not a house if it doesn't have swings, honestly. Like, I, I, I literally need that in my house. But anyway, we're going to go into the pool area now, and we're going to head over to the gazebo. And is that, does that say no mermaids? Seriously? Like, I've, I've never used this particular diving platform before, so, um, oh my goodness, it says no mermaids. It, it, did they have this island living thing planned all the way back to when they did get together? Are they, did they plan stuff like that far and ahead? I wonder if they were like watching everybody be like, we want university, we want university right now. And they're like, you know, just, oh, we've got stuff planned for you. But I, I've never seen that before. But anyway, you guys, here, we're going to follow Smokey up here up to the little gazebo. And this was in the original house. And um, so I kind of redid it. I kind of put like, you know, the little, as you can see, the little, um, vine-covered walls there. And I put, like, you know, some colorful benches because, oh, there's a glitch. You know, why not? But anyway, we go back down here, back past the No Mermaid thing. I mean, I can't, I can't have been the first person to notice that. It's been out for that long. But anyway, you guys, here is, like, kind of, like, the side entryway. We have, um, some family photos up there along with that little shelf. I just like that shelf, probably because it's teal, but... You know? Anyway, through this door is a half bathroom on the first floor. This is kind of like, you know, the ones that the guests would use. We got a bunch of, like, stuff. We got, like, nail polish, perfume, although people shouldn't wear, like, gobs of perfume because, honestly, some people, myself included, or at least I used to be, I don't know, I haven't been around perfume lately, but are really, like, sensitive to it, and it just sets them off. So you really got to be careful of those people, you know? But anyway, there's the toilet. There's the kitty toilet. We go back through here and we are in like the little entrance area and over here is kind of like the little reading nook of the living room. We have 
the fireplace, we have the bookshelves, we have a big ornate photo and toddler blocks and all this other stuff. And through here we have Grayson's office and once again it is neat, tidy, and organized. And I don't even remember. I don't think I gave him a neat trait, but um, I gave him like ambitious or something, but there's like the bulletin board and there's like his files and stuff like that. And that is the entire first floor. So with that being done, we are now going to head upstairs. I got the keys right, yay. Anyway, now we're on the second floor landing and as you can see, the second floor has a couple of rooms. We've got two rooms over there. We got a little area over here with a lot of knickknacks. We have a children's table over here, and right here we have the washer and dryer. Because I was going to do a laundry room, but then I decided to use that room for something else instead. But anyway, now we are going to visit the master bedroom, and ooh, I'm really proud of this room too. I decided to do this room the dark blue walls, because I... The dark teal walls, excuse me. Because, you know, I've done this before in, like, living rooms, but never in a bedroom. And I'm always, like, confused at what to do the master bedroom because I kind of want to make it, like, you know, a little girly. But then I realized that there's, like, a couple in here. And, like, no. But I think this turned out really, really well. We've got um, the vanity table over here. We've got TV with some family photos. And th and we got some um, candles on the side, we got a bookshelf over there and a seating area and a fireplace with a mirror in it. Now in here is something really extravagant. This is the master bathroom. And I normally don't do huge bathrooms because I never know what to put in there, but I saw somebody, dang it, if only I could remember his name. Um, but um, he had a really great master bathroom and there's a lot of stuff here. There's like magazines for when you, you know, when you really have to go, but you can't go, you know what I mean? And there's a um, mirror right there. And I was going to put the toilet, like, right in front of the mirror. But then I realized it would be so disturbing to have to look at yourself on the toilet. Trust me, there's a mirror on the end of the door of the bathroom. I've seen that. So nobody wants to see that. But anyway, we have, ooh, a romantic champagne ice glass for date night. And then this room is the bath area, actual bathroom, I guess. We have, um, see, we have all this stuff. See, I didn't even know you could put, like, little stuff on the, um, what you would call it, the side of the bathtub. We have the Jungle Adventure mirror. We have two mirrors here. I don't exactly know why, I guess, because I like mirrors above the sink, but um, I, I really don't know. You know, I was thinking, why the heck am I putting a sink in both rooms? But then I remember there's technically two rooms in my bathroom, and they both have sinks, so we have the shower over here, some cabinets, and some plants. See, whenever I don't know what to do with a corner, I just stick a house plant there. So um, now we're going to go back through the master bedroom. There's the little seating area. And we're going to go in through this door, and this is what used to be the laundry room, but now I decided to make it an art studio because, oh, geez, I forgot her name. She honestly needs somewhere to paint, and I figured, you know, this would be the perfect little room for it. She has, you know, there's a painting in progress. Well, I just created these sims, so they're really low on painting skill, but um, there's for digital art right there, and we have just paintings just, like, everywhere. And I think, you know, as I play this family, she makes more paintings. I might just hang some of them up on these walls. But you have a pretty good view of the neighborhood of the yard here. So, um, anyway, we're going to go now. And before we go into this room, we're going to go check out the second floor bathroom. And this, again, is a half bath because the only other person who has a bedroom on the second floor is the toddler. And so I figured... You know, she, she doesn't really need a full bath. If they really need to bathe her, they can just take her into the master bathroom. But um, anyway, now we're going to head into the nursery. And yes, I did deviate from the floor plan of this house. But um, here's the nursery. We have, I don't know why I'm always doing these nurseries and pinks, but I just, I just think it's really cute. Um, we have a little divider and we have, oh, there's a, there's a crib for the new baby. How sweet. We have... You know, just, just a big teddy bear. Just a bunch of stuff that, you know, kids would enjoy. We have a little night light, although that doesn't help with nightmares much. But um, a little mobile over here for decoration. A dollhouse. I think I scaled it down like one scale. Little toddler blocks. And over here we have, you know, just a bunch of stuff to keep the toys and some of the clothes. We have a mirror. We have a little seating area. And here we have a changing table that I did make out of a couple of objects. And it is not functional. It is purely decorative. But, you know, looks are everything. If the room doesn't look good, it doesn't look right. So, 
There we go. That is the nursery. We have the little bookshelf over there. And now we're going to head up to the third floor. And you're probably going to notice that this is going to be a lot faster. Because, I don't know why it is, but like the, the third floor, when you zoom stuff in on, not zoom stuff in, but when you move on the third floor, it just goes really, really fast. And I have absolutely no idea why that is. But anyway, here's the third floor landing. Here we have like three more bedrooms. And um, what should we call it? So we have, ooh, a dartboard, okay. So the first bedroom is going into here, and this is a bedroom for a boy. And as you can see, it's blue. We got the little, little pennants over there. Look real cool, maybe those are the clubs he's in. Maybe those are just things he likes. We have a little nightlight peeking through the bench because he's afraid of the dark, but he is too embarrassed to admit that. So it's kind of hiding it, but it's there. And then we have a little void career area. We have just a little, area above the dresser with toys and just stuff like that and an alien he won at a carnival and just a bunch of posters and all this other stuff that's you know just cluttered on his desk and then here we have the area where he can play boy critters with his friends it's a really great you know place for him and his friends to hang out in his room little posters on the wall And the next room is for a girl. This is a girl's room. And I decided to do this one in purple. And I accented it with blue, pink, and green. And the only green touch is like the green curtains. And I decided to do that because, well, they looked good, honestly. And I only put the curtains on the things that weren't behind the um little seat there. Because, I don't know, I tried the whole thing and it just looked like it was overdoing it a lot. But, um... That looked pretty good. I want to be able to sit in that seat and look out at the view. There we have um, the dresser with a little mirror. Never used that mirror. Here's something new I did with the bed. I kind of put it at an angle because this is a pretty big room. But you have lots of posters on the walls. And, you know, it just there's nightlight and there's pretty much everything. And um, before we go in the last bedroom here, we're going to go check out the bathroom. This one has actually cabinets, which I never put in the bathroom. Well, not cabinets, but like counters. I, I don't even know. There's a bunch of knickknacks and stuff just like sitting there. There's a mirror, there's a toilet, and there's the actual bath and shower combo. Now, we're going to go to the oldest daughter's room. She is a teenager. She likes lots of bright colors, and you can see that in this room because I put a lot of colorful stuff in here. And I was kind of going to go for the punk vibe, and then I decided, you know what, I don't really like that for her. I kind of wanted a splash of colors here and there, and, you know, I think it, I think it really worked out. Because this is, this is a nice room, and I like doing teenage girls' rooms and girls' rooms in general, because I just have, like, a lot of ideas, and there's a lot of cute stuff that I really like, and, you know, just stuff like that. Boys' rooms are a little bit more difficult for me, because, I don't know, I just don't feel like there's not that much stuff in them. Like, the only stuff for, like, little boys is, like, sports stuff. And maybe some of these boys aren't into sports. But anyway, she has a desk and a computer over here. And we have, she has her own bathroom, so she does not have to share with her brother and sister at all. She has her own shower, her own little, um, rug there. And she has, you know, just... A really cute mirror. I just love the colorful mirror. I love that mirror. And um, she also has her own little balcony. And we're going to go check this out here. It has, um, it's got a very good view of the backyard. And it's got, you know, a couple of chairs. So that's this house. That's basically everything that's in this house. If you enjoyed touring this house, please give this video a like. Please consider subscribing. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye, guys.